Solving rational functions. Okay, this first example I have on here is just to kind of start talking about um, what we need whenever we're solving these. So the first thing that we always need is common denominators. So make sure you have a common denominator. Then what we can do is we can just set the tops equal. And I see now I already have a mistake in here. This should have been a 7. Okay, so 2 plus 5 is 7. So once our denominators are the same, we can take the numerators, set them equal, and that's a true statement right there. Okay, so on this first problem, again, I have common denominators. So I'm just going to set my, x, or my numerators equal. So I have 4x plus 2 plus 6 equals 2x. So I can forget about the denominators because they're all the same. And then I get 4x plus 8 equals 2x. Subtract the 4x over. And divide by negative 2, I get x equals negative 4. Okay, and so here's another example that's going to help us understand this next concept of getting common denominators. So in this problem, I have 6, 6, and 3 as my denominators. So I need to make this 3 a 6. So think about this 6 as being 3 times 2 already. So we're just going to need to multiply the top and bottom of this first fraction by 2, and then we'll get common denominators. So now, denominators are all the same. I can set my numerators equal. We will subtract the 5 over, and then divide by 2, we get x equals 1. Okay, on this next problem, our, our denominators are 6x squared, 2x, and 6x squared. I know that if I just take this 2x and multiply it by 3x, I'll get 6x squared. So I'm going to multiply this fraction, top and bottom, by 3x. So rewriting the whole thing, I have 1 over 6x squared equals 3x over 6x squared. Okay, and now I have all the same denominators. I can set my numerators equal. Subtract over the 7. And divide by 3, I get x equals negative 2. All right, on this next problem, um, looking at my denominators, I, the one that I want to use that I want to make everything else like is going to be 2n squared. So I'm going to want to get a 2 and an n squared in each of these denominators. On the first problem, I just have to multiply the top and bottom by 2. On the second problem, I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom by 2n. So I get 2 over 2n squared plus 2n over 2n squared equals 1 over 2n squared. Okay, so I can set my numerators equal, subtract over the 2, divide by 2, I get n equals negative 1 half. Okay, so my denominators here look a little bit um, different, so I want to factor that middle one so that I can see if there's a factor of r minus 2 already in there. So I'm looking for what multiplies to 10 and adds to negative 7. That would be r minus 2 and r minus 5. Okay, so every denominator has a factor of r minus 2 in it, but my middle one has a factor of r minus 5 as well. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by r minus 5. So what I have now is going to be r minus 5 because 1 times r minus 5 is just r minus 5 plus 1 equals now I need to distribute the 6 to everything over there, so 6r minus 30. Okay, so all my denominators are the same, and so now I can set my numerators equal. 
Be careful that if this is ever a negative sign right there, you would then put a minus and may have to distribute it to other things that are in this numerator if need be. Okay, so I'm going to combine my negative 5 and 1. I'm going to subtract over my r to get the r's on the same side. And then add over my 30. Divide by 5, and I get r equals 26 over 5. On this next one, I have two denominators of r squared minus 2r, and then I have one denominator of just a 1. I can put any number over 1, and it's still the same. So um, first, my first thought is, oh, I need to factor this r squared minus 2r, pull out a common factor of r, but that's not really helpful because there's no factor of r or r minus 2 in there, so I really don't need to factor it. It wouldn't hurt, but you don't really need to. Um, so I can see all I need to do is multiply this fraction, top and bottom, by r squared minus 2r, and then I'll have common denominators. So I get, I have a minus sign here, so we need to be careful about that in a minute. Okay, so denominators are all the same. I can set my numerators equal. I'm going to need to distribute this negative to both the r squared and the minus 2r. So I have r plus 5 minus r squared plus 2r equals 1. Notice here I have a factor of r squared left, and there's no way to get rid of it because I don't have another r squared that cancels with it. So I'm going to need to factor this quadratic. So if you recall from our solving quadratics, um, we need to move everything to one side, and I always want my r squared or x squared term to be positive. So I'm going to move everything to the right side. So I'm going to have a 0 left on the left side. I'm going to add the r squared over. This 1r and 2r makes 3r, which I'm going to subtract over. And then I'm going to subtract over this 5, which will combine with the 1. Subtract the 5, I get a negative 4. So now I can factor this. I want to know what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 3. That would be r minus 4 and r plus 1. And then to solve this, I'm just setting these equal to 0. So if I set r minus 4 equal to 0, add the 4 over, I get r equals 4. Set r plus 1 equal to 0, subtract the 1 over, I get r equals negative 1. Okay, in this problem, same idea with this 1 here. I'm going to put it over 1. I'm going to multiply my 1 over 1, top and bottom, by 3x to give me common denominators. So, if I do that, I get 3x here, 3x here. So, setting my numerators equal, I will get... So we have 3x plus x squared minus 5x minus 24 equals x minus 6. Ooh, that's long. Okay, so the x squared again can't cancel out, and I want to keep it positive, so leave everything on the left side and move things over to the left side. So I have an x squared. 3x and negative 5x combined to make negative 2x. And then I'm going to subtract this x over, add the 6 over. And now I'm ready to factor. The factors that multiply to negative 18 and add to negative 3 are x minus 6 and x plus 3. So then whenever we solve this, we get x equals 6 and negative 3. Okay, on this one, um, I do not have common denominators. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this p squared plus p. I can pull out a common factor of p, and I get p times p plus 1. 
So I notice that this, uh, the far right fraction has a p plus 1 in the denominator. All I need to do is multiply it top and bottom by p, and then I will get the same denominator. So if I go ahead and set my numerators equal, I have p plus 5 equals 1. Now up here, I need to distribute this p, so I get p squared minus 6p. And I also need to distribute this negative, so I'm going to get negative p squared plus 6p. Again, I'm going to have a quadratic to solve. I need to get everything to the left side so that my p squared term becomes positive. So I'll add over p squared. I'll subtract over 6p. And I will subtract over my 1. Okay, the factors that multiply to 4 and add to negative 5 are p minus 1 and p minus 4. So in the end, I get p equals 1 and p equals 4.